It's been dubbed the miracle at Mirror Lake. When your number eight ranked University of St. Francis football team knocked off number four Concordia 34 to 27 under the lights at Bishop Darcy Stadium. With 17 seconds left to play in the game tied at 27, Matt Schwartz blocked the field goal attempt and Jack Givens scooped it up and took it to the house for six. Wow, what a game. We've had some crazy endings through the years, but that has to be up there. I could count on one hand, and uh, it would be one of those. One of the reporters uh, asked me yesterday about it, and you know, it's like it was luck and good fortune. But I'm going to say this. I think uh, Eric Wagner and Steve Will are special team gurus. They work on it every day. We commit time, a lot of time, to special teams each and every day. So they work on those blocks. They work on the returns. They work on the execution of all phases, so that's about 15% of the game. When I was younger, coach, I didn't spend as, nearly as much time that, that we do now. So the punt block was something that was practiced. The field goal block was something that was practiced, even to the point of being in the position to get the scoop on the block. Uh, and, and Jack returned for the touchdown, but it was something that, that was practiced. So. A lot of folks think all you do is practice plays and lining up on defense and making tackles. Um, but but that's a, that is a special teams and we, uh, we work on it a great deal and um, won the game for us. Just from previous kicks, uh, I knew that they had that tendency just to put their heads down and really not throw much of a shoulder into us. So uh, I knew going into that last kick that there was the opportunity for any one of us to get through that line. And uh, Coach Wagner just knew that that left too heavy was gonna be that play to call. And an unbelievable feeling, you know. Um, the fact that it took that bounce right into his hands and in the game on that note, instead of having to take it into overtime was just, I mean, incredible. Schwartz was named MSFA and NAIA Player of the Week after the big block to go with four tackles and three sacks. Givens was named MSFA Special Teams Player of the Week after his scoop and score that electrified Bishop Darcy Stadium. I was absolutely elated. I mentioned in a team meeting um, about the guys that are really about we, the team. And uh, Matt Swartz and Jack Givens have been that way their entire time here. Uh, they've always given their best with a great attitude. They've taken coaching well. You never hear anything but positive from them. Their body language, their attitude, and uh, what comes from their mouth is nothing but positive, and that's what teams are built on. So for Matt to get the block at the end, not to mention uh, all over the field on defense, and uh, for Jack to pick it up and get that touchdown was something that just warmed my heart. It also warmed his heart to see linebackers Jamal Jackson and River Walsh flying around making plays. The duo combined for 15 tackles and some huge plays. Linebacker Nick Lucas led the team with 10 tackles and had a scoop and score off of Walsh's blocked punt. Jamel has uh, overcome injuries, a lot of adversity since he's been here, so I'm so happy for him. He is playing very well right now. He plays hard, he plays with passion. Uh, he's a physical player, and that's what you need at, at linebacker. River Walsh is a, an 18-year-old freshman. He's going to be an outstanding player, getting better and better each and every day. Um, he just has that X factor that you can't coach. He knows how to play that position. So he's going to be a great football player. Um, uh, Nick Lucas is also doing a great job at linebacker. You know, he got the, the score on Rivers block uh, on the, the punt. So uh, the, the second level that I've been concerned about since the preseason 
You know, it's coming along very, very well. And so too has the career of Schwartz, who is now a senior. Schwartz has been a relentless player throughout his career. And this year started off with a bang against USF Illinois. Defensive end James Jamisich had the strip sack. And Matt was there to make sure the QB did not get the ball back. I saw Jamisich come off that edge and I knew he was going to get to the quarterback. And next thing I know, the ball is just in the air and the quarterback's just f he fumbled it up again in the air. And I saw that opportunity to grab it. And once I had it, I knew. I just went back to my Snyder days when I was a fullback, wrap that ball up and just go forward. And that was incredible. And I have to thank James, of course, for making that opportunity for me. Being my last season, just giving it all I have, you know, probably the last time I play football, this, this will be my last time playing football. So I came into this season just wanting to do the best I can, just give back to this program what it's given me. So just going out there and giving it all I got. And that's the way to play, especially for your Cougs, who only have nine regular season games this season due to Lindenwood Belleville folding its program this past summer. Some feel that USF can't afford another loss if it wants to make the playoffs, which means the playoffs have already started for your Cougs. Absolutely. I mean, after the Marion loss, I mean, for that, it's pretty much do or die for us. I mean, we have to compete to win these games because fortunate, I mean, last year we had two losses and I kind of think they let us in the playoffs because we were back-to-back -back champions, you know, and you never know this year with that setup. If, you know, if you get two losses, you don't know if they're gonna let us back in. So, I mean, treat every, we, we treat every game like it's a playoff game because, I mean, it, it practically is for us at this point with having that one loss and only having nine games on the season, you know. I, mean, I know it kind of feels like it, especially when the loss is to Marion that, you know, it's kind of a downer, but I mean, I knew coming in that Sunday that the team wasn't completely just utterly disappointed in the loss. I mean, we still had a lot of great things to come out of that game. Yeah, we lost it, but defense improved. You know, offense had that experience where they're learning what plays are working for them, what plays aren't working for them. So I think as a team, I mean, it sucks to lose, but sometimes it is a good thing because you can see what you need to improve on as a team and what we need to do to get better and continue to win. And this week, USF will look for its fifth win, but will have to do so without starting quarterback Matt Crable who suffered a knee injury against Concordia. So redshirt freshman Heath Simmons will get his first start. Well, we found that the injury that he sustained was not near, near as serious as what we originally thought. Uh, he's back, he's walking around. Uh, he's going to draft Saturday, actually. Um, we're going to hold him out if, uh, you know, I, I have confidence that uh, Heath will do a good job. Clay Cenarius is always there. He, he can manage the team and make throws. And so, you know, we're going to be fine. Um, other guys are going to have to rally around. And I saw that Saturday night. I saw senior leadership that I didn't think we had the week before. Guys rallied around Heath and gave him confidence. And they will do so again. Another electric environment is in store for this Saturday. As USF hosts for the first time ever, Indiana Wesleyan. Expect the Wildcat faithful to make the 50 mile trip from Marion and get loud. With a 4-1 record in hand and an unblemished 2-0 in conference play. Well we can only take care of ourselves. We have to be, um, we have to play uh, with great passion. They play hard. They never quit. And we're, we're going to have to do the same. Similar to what Concordia was last week I think. Uh, it's a team of character. I think they're well coached. They obviously have a uh, commitment from top to bottom from the university to achieve excellence. And they are definitely in pursuit of that. They've got a good football team. And, uh, you know, I, I have great respect for them, respect all, fear none. You know, it's about what we do. We have to play well. We have to play hard. We have to take care of the football. I think this is a game for us. I mean, we can really let loose and just have fun. I mean, them being as cocky as they are, you know, it's always fun to shut a team up. Um, 
I mean, they are a good football team, but they're still young. I mean, you watch their offense. They have a lot of, just a lot of small things that could add up for the defense just to capitalize on. So they have a lot of trick formations. They run a lot of screens. So just being able to read what they're doing because they try to throw as much as they can at you to try to confuse the defense. So being able to read what their offense is gonna do and just get into the ball, you know? I mean, their, off their offensive line is, I mean, they're bigger, but I think D-line with our speed and our uh, athletic ability, we'll be able to get through them. And really, quarterback hasn't been pressured that much. Only been sacked six times on the season, I believe. Um, I honestly believe we have one of the best D-lines in the country. So us being able to put that pressure on them then all linebackers stepping up and doing their jobs and DBs and everything else and just playing like we have been playing, just keeping that momentum, not letting up, just finishing a game. That's what we're focusing on. Please remain standing for today's pre game prayer delivered by Sister Venetia Hanaberry. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the national anthem presented to you by the USF Marching Pride.
everybody to the University of St. Francis Bishop Darcy Stadium for today's matchup. It's your number seventh ranked University of St. Francis Cougars taking on the Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats. Wesleyan, this is the second year of competing in NAIA football for the Wildcats. They're from Marion, Indiana, just 50 miles south of Fort Wayne. So a lot of players from Fort Wayne on the roster uh, for both of these squads. St. Francis, once again, coming off a uh, miracle at Mirror Lake last week. It was a great finish there against Concordia of Ann Arbor with 17 seconds left to play in the fourth quarter. The game was tied at 27, and St. Francis, Matt Schwartz blocks the field goal attempt, scooped up by Jack Gibbons, who raised 72 yards to the house. There was 7.3 seconds remaining, and the Cougars end up winning it 34-27. St. Francis, of course, opening up the season on the road at USF Illinois, winning it 56-6. At Robert Morris, winning it 29-16. Against St. Ambrose here at Bishop Darcy Stadium, winning it 31-13. Then on the road at Marion, suffered our only loss of the year, 28-10 to the Knights. Marion was ranked number six at the time. They have now jumped up to number three in the polls. And then last week, the big victory against Concordia. This year, Parkview Cancer Institute asked me to design the second annual T-shirt to help fundraise for our transformative care program. Indiana Wildcats, Indiana Westland comes in with a 4-1 overall record, 2-0 and in MSFA play. Uh, they opened up the season on the road at Butler and lost 30 to 27, but have rattled off four straight victories at home against Missouri Baptist 23 to 22, at home against Olivet Naz 28-24, on the road a big win for the Wildcats at Taylor 14 to 13 last year. They opened up their first ever game at their brand new stadium against Taylor and lost. So getting some revenge there, Taylor out of Upland, Indiana. Just about 10 to 15 minutes, uh, or maybe a little bit, maybe more like uh, 20 to 30 minutes away from Indiana Wesleyan. And then last week at Lawrence Tech, the Wildcats winning at 45 to 10. Lawrence Tech started their program the same year as Indiana Wesleyan. For your Cougars on offense, gonna have a new starter this week at quarterback, and it's a redshirt freshman, Heath Simmons. Martell Williams at running back, wingbacks Casey Cole, left tackle Reese Roney, John Doherty at left guard, Landon Myers at center, Nick Shoemaker, your right guard, Ryder Burchett, the right tackle, Rocky James, Duke Blackwell, and Dan Rixey, your starting wide receivers. On defense for St. Francis, James Janicic. James, one of the top sack men in the country. Right now he ranks number three in NAIA with 7.5 sacks on the year. He's averaging 1.5 sacks per game. James, a senior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Carroll High School, you're starting defensive end. Nose tackle, Matt Schwartz, who had the big block. Matt was the NAIA player of the week last week. He had three sacks to go along with that block kick. He was awesome. Miles McClendon at D tackle and Kevion Evans. Kevion, a redshirt freshman out of Toledo, Ohio, has really provided a spark for the Cougar defense, and he's got three more years left. Nick Lucas and Jamal Jackson, your middle backers. Jack Givens at cornerback. Blake Schumacher at free safety. Andrew McCormick getting the start here at strong safety. Jalen Moss, uh, weak side safety, and cornerback Ryan Johnson. Of course, Ryan Johnson is a senior three-year starter for the Cougs and is fantastic. Both Ryan and Rocky James are from Xenia, Ohio, went to Xenia High School. Uh, so two big-time seniors here on this team. As Wesleyan comes out on the field, you see your Cougar captains, Blake Schumacher wearing number 20, Rocky James number six, Ryan Johnson 21, Matt Schwartz 94, and John Doherty, number 57. Indiana Wesleyan, they like, a, like to use an empty backfield a lot, so they do pass the ball a ton. Looks like for Wesleyan, two number 10s are their captain. I know one of them is the quarterback, 
Zach Blair, a senior quarterback, transfer from Ball State, and Peyton Marksbury, a junior linebacker. Both of them wear number 10. Number 57 is Caleb Ruffner. And number 11, I believe that's Cameron Lockett Jr. So Indiana Wesleyan doubles up those numbers quite a bit. For Wesleyan, keep an eye out on Braden Smith. He's averaging 7.6 receptions per game, ranks him number two in the country. Josh Davidson ranks number five in tackles per game. He's averaging 11.5. Leading Indiana Wesleyan in rushing is Wade Phillips. He's averaging five yards per carry. He's got 199 yards rushing on the season. Martell Williams for your Cougars has 353 yards rushing on the season, averaging 4.4 per carry. Check this out, everybody. P.J. Dean, who was injured in the Robert Morris game, I believe P.J. is dressed today, uh, but hopefully... Maybe uh, could save him another game just to get that ankle a little bit stronger. P.J., a fantastic runner, averaging 12.6 yards per carry this year, 164 yards rushing with one touchdown. Martell has three touchdowns on the season. So we're just about a minute and 10 seconds away from kickoff here at Bishop Darcy Stadium. Hey, next week is the final home game for your Cougars as we'll take on Sienna Heights. Sienna Heights out of Adrian, Michigan, about an hour and a half up north. They are ranked number 21 in the country. Of course, Head coach Kevin Donnelly comes in with 360 wins under his belt. 330 wins, excuse me. Ranked number one as the active winningest coach in NAIA. Back to return it for Indiana Wesleyan will be number one. That's Justin Johnson. Johnson is a sophomore, defensive back, six foot, 186 pounds. He's out of Marion, Indiana, went to Marion High School. Marion High School, what a year they're having in Class 4A in the state of Indiana. He's, they're doing a heck of a job this year. And to kick it off, of course, is going to be Gavin Gardner. For your Cougars. Gavin Gardner actually is just one field goal away from tying the program record for career field goals that's set by Emerson Eber back in 2012. So here we are all set and Johnson's gonna field this ball at the two yard line. And making that tackle for the Cougars. That was big Nate Place, the freshman, along with number 37, Mike Adams. So that's two freshmen right there for your Cougars. Cougars actually really young this year. Two freshmen making the tackle there, and Nate Place. Nate Place was number two in tackles after two games this year with 15. He hasn't seen a whole lot of time as of late, but uh, provides a lot of really good depth here for the Cougars. Once again, your quarterback. He's the transfer. That's Zach Blair. Quick pass there to the sideline, completed to number two, Braden Smith. And that's the connection there, guys. Blair to Smith. Zach Blair entering today with 1,103 yards under his belt and nine touchdowns. He's averaging 220.6 yards per game. Blair ranks number 20 in NAIA averaging the 220 yards per. Blair finds his running back, that's number 24, chased down by Blake Schumacher and wrestled out of bounds after a gain of about one yard. Number 24, Devodney Alford, a sophomore running back, 5'11", 201. He's out of Orlando, Florida. 
Once again, Wesleyan, second year of competition. This is their third year of having the program. Their head coach is George Langs out of Wheaton College. Wheaton College, they recruit nationally and expect Indiana Wesleyan to do the same. Here on second and nine, big hole tackled by Johnson and Blake Schumacher. Another nice run by Devodney Alford, who will take it into Cougar territory here to the 46-yard line. That's going to bring up a first and 10 here for the Wildcats, just one minute into this game. Offset eye for first the Wildcats. As they're going to reverse it and send the fullback over off the wing. Tight end switches to the left side. Blair with the handoff and a big hole. Making the tackle there is Nick Lucas, who closed in very fast. Nick Lucas, the team leader in tackles here for your Cougars. Lucas entering today with 50 tackles on the season. Jamal Jackson ranks number two with 32 tackles on the season. You see the speed there of Nick Lucas. Lucas, sophomore out of Lake Central High School, St. John, Indiana, up in the region. Second and three. Blair once again with the handoff, this time to number 38. That's Jesse Deglow. Deglow entering today with 146 yards. Rushing on the season, we got a flag. Indiana Wesleyan will definitely try to get under your skin. We've seen that time in and time again with the basketball programs, both two very successful programs here at St. Francis and Indiana Wesleyan. So of course that has been the Achilles heel here for your Cougars this year. And the 15 yard penalty is gonna take Wesleyan all the way up to the 20 yard line. Jamal Jackson getting called with the personal foul. JJ, a fantastic game last week. He's out of Indianapolis Cathedral High School. So it's gonna be Blair out of the shotgun. He's got Devodney Alford offset to his left-hand side. Wing on the right side of the line in motion is his favorite receiver, Braden Smith. Handoff goes to Alford. Jack Givens there to wall him off, and he gets around Blake Schumacher. Finally wrestled down by, looks like that's Cade Irwin, number 33 for St. Francis. Once again, though, that'll bring up a... Looks like it's going to be second and one here for the Wildcats. Andrew McCormick also in on the tackle. McCormick came in as a quarterback, a transfer out of Indiana State, played his high school ball at East Noble, and Andrew has really been looking solid on defense as of late for St. Francis. I formation under center is the quarterback. Handoff goes to Alford. Alford makes one man miss. That was Schwartz in the backfield, and he is going to be wrestled down right at about the 10-yard line. Looks like that should be a first down here for the Wildcats. Actually, it's marked... Yeah, they're going to put it right at the 10. So that'll bring up first and goal for Indiana Wesleyan on their first possession here. 11.40 remaining in the first quarter. Talked about Nick Lucas averaging 10 tackles per game. That ranks him number 17 in the country for Nick Lucas, the sophomore linebacker for your Cougars. Blair once again is under center for Indiana Wesleyan. Tight end off to the left side. That was a good seal on Ryan Johnson. Coming up for the Cougars from the linebacker position. Looks like that was Nick Lucas, I believe, again. And Kevion Evans also in on the tackle. In there at left defensive end for St. Francis is number 40. That'd be 46. Ethan Thur. Thur's been outstanding, switching from linebacker to defensive end here in his redshirt freshman season. Tight end, wingback off to the right-hand side. 
And the reverse goes to Braden Smith. And he is in for a touchdown. So that's a nine yard touchdown for Braden Smith as Wesleyan goes up six nothing. Braden Smith, who entered today with six touchdowns on the season, all of those receiving. That is his first rush of the year for the wide receiver. 10.30 on the clock. PAT attempt is up and good by number three. That's well, PAT attempt is good. PAT. Remember, folks, St. Francis final regular season home game next week against Siena Heights. Last year, it was another miracle finish. I tell you, we have some of the best football games you're ever going to see here at Bishop Darcy Stadium. Last week was a testament of that. And last year against Siena Heights, folks, we were down by eight points with 41 seconds remaining. Matt Crable drives us all the way down the field. Touchdown and two-point conversion takes the game into overtime where the Cougars eventually beat Siena Heights, making it into the playoffs to the semifinals before dropping to the event eventual national champions Morningside. What a game that was, about six Taking inches of snow the there in Sioux City, 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 Iowa. Iowa. So with the Two kick, the number two, Ben Van, Von Van Gunten and Mike, Mike Adams to receive it there at the six yard line. Following his blockers, that's Zenden Dellinger right in front. Adams had a seam there for a second. He's tackled by number 33. That's Jacob Daniel, the sophomore. Daniel's a wide receiver at six foot 195 out of Georgetown, Ohio. Once again, with this Wesleyan roster, you got Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Colorado, Florida, Virginia, Texas. Matter of fact, their head coach, Jordan Langs, is from Michigan, so he has a lot of ties there in the Wolverine State. He Simmons making his first start here. Ball's first and 10 at the 25 yard line. That's Martell Williams behind him. Two wide receivers to the bottom. Rocky James out wide left. Fake on the handoff goes to Duke Blackwell. Wide receiver screen. James doing a good job blocking there as Blackwell gets knocked out at about the 34. Complete number 10, Duke Blackwell. We'll see where they mark that ball. It's going to be at the 33-yard line. It'll bring up second and two. Bay brings up second and two from the Cougar 33-yard line. Rocky James, what a spark he brought to the Cougars last week, that's for sure, after not playing in the first quarter. Simmons out of the shotgun. Hand off to Williams. Nice hole! And Williams takes it all the way to the 50-yard line. He'll be tackled by number one, Julian Hooglin and number five, Lamont Matheson. Or maybe it was Justin Johnson. I don't know how you have two number ones that are both DBs. But that's what the roster says. First and ten from the 50 after that big run by Telly. Martell Williams. 9.34 and counting here. Simmons. Once again, fakes the handoff. It's Rocky James once again on the quick pass to the outside. So Coach Donnelly getting Simmons Heath Simmons comfortable early on with Rocky these short James. routes. Run down by number, number five, Lamont Matheson. Matheson. Heath Simmons entering today with 178 yards passing and a touchdown. That touchdown came in the first game of the season in Joliet, Illinois against the Fighting Saints. That's Casey Call, the wing back, handoff once again as Martell Williams went right to the left side. Looks like it's gonna be about a gain of one yard. That's gonna bring up third down and 11. Lamont Matheson once again making another tackle for Indiana Westland. Matheson comes in with 20 tackles on the season and one tackle for a loss. 
Big third down here for St. Francis. Two wide receivers up top, that's Dan Rixey. He Simmons looking that way, goes to his fourth progression there, Duke Blackwell across the middle, passes incomplete. So now bring up fourth and 11, and Joe Nepper on to punt it. Mean Joe Nepper from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Bishop Dwenger High School. He's having a heck of a year as well for your Cougars, averaging 39.8 yards per punt. Deep for the Wildcats, 11, Cameron Locke. Cameron Locke back deep for the Wildcats. And he's going to fair catch it there at the 16. So smart play there by the Wildcat returner. Once again, Cameron Locke, 5'9", 186. He's a junior DB. Brings up first and 10 from the 17 here. This is a second possession for the Wildcats. The first one resulted in a nine yard touchdown run by Braden Smith. Out of the shotgun handoff goes to Alford. Big hole for Alford as he will be brought down at about the 27 yard line. Nick Lucas once again in on the tackle. Devontae Alford, the ball carrier. Going to bring up a first and 10. Ball at the 27. Out there for the Cougars, Ethan Thur at right defense Ben St. Francis right now playing without their star defense Ben James Jamisich. And Kevion Evans, the opposite defensive end. Miles McClendon in there along with Justin Groves, your defensive tackles. And McCormick with the big hit after the incomplete pass intended for Alford. And that's exactly what Andrew McCormick brings to this St. Francis defense, folks. He is a big body. He's a strong man down there. Once again, just a redshirt freshman. Another big body for the Cougars that got moved back to defense is Jalen Charlton, who's from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Bishop Lures High School. So we'll hope to see Jalen Charlton Getting some action here soon for St. Francis. Second and seven, ball at the 27. Blair out of the shotgun, has two receivers up top. They were looking for the screen, and Kevion Evans had it covered perfectly. The pass was intended for Devontae Alford, but Kevion snuffed that one out. So that'll bring up a third and 10 from the 27. Folks, my name's Jeff Mahoney. Uh, we apologize, but we could not get a good connection from the radio guys, Joe Parson and Sean McBride. So here I am, you guys are stuck with me. On third and 10, Alford just offset pistol formation here with Blair out of the shotgun. Blair drops back and good timing pattern there. Looks like that's gonna be about a yard short as Jack Givens was able to make the tackle right away on Braden Smith. Boy, Smith is definitely as advertised. Once again, folks, he comes in ranked number two in the country, averaging 7.6 catches per game. So here in Wesleyan's second possession, they will punt it away and back to return it for your Cougars. Looks like Dylan Hunley, number five, the junior wide receiver, also out of Kendallville, Indiana, East Noble High School. Hunley just two returns under his belt with 16 return yards. He's averaging eight per, and that's gonna be down to at the 20 by number 19, Donovan Shelton, a sophomore defensive back. 5'8", 180, out of Centerville, Ohio. So that'll bring the Cougar offense back onto the field. Landon Tiny Myers in that center. He is a junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana, Bishop Dwinger High School, where he won a state championship in his senior year. As you can imagine, Dwinger had a very large offensive line that year, and they have a large offensive line this year. 
Their offensive line coach is Jason Fabini. Played 17 years in the NFL. Handoff goes to Telly. Looks for the cutback. Martell Williams is going to be tackled by, it's number 10. Peyton Marksbury, junior linebacker at 6'2", 228. He's out of Boonville, Indiana. It's going to bring up second and 10. No game brings up second and 10 from the Cougar 20 yard line. Talking to Matt Schwartz, the defensive tackle this week, he thought that the Cougars would have the advantage, advantage on the offensive line and defensive line against these Wildcats. Pistol formation, fake on the handoff, play action pass, looking to the right sideline, and that's going to skip over to Dan Rixey. He had the senior wide, wide receiver wide open. Rixey entering today as the team's leading receiver with 369 yards receiving on the season. He averages 13.7 and has one touchdown. Dan Rixey, one of the more gifted athletes you'll see in NAIA football. Eli Wallace now into the game on third and 10. That's Casey Call there at the right wing back. Simmons looking to his left, and he is going to be brought down for a sack. Looks like number 48 for Wesleyan. Simmons is sacked by number 48, Ishmael Avila. That's Ishmael Avila, the junior. D lineman at 6'2, 231. He's out of Jasper, Tennessee. So Joe Nepper now going to have to punt it from the, his own end zone. He's standing right now right at the goal line. Ball placed at the 12-yard line. Nepper, nice looking punt. Fielded right at the 45 and missing the first tackle there for the Cougars was Damon Hunter. And a great return still on his feet. Finally brought down by Nick Lucas. That was number six. Tommy Fawcett. Fawcett entering today with four returns for 32 yards, averaging eight yards per punt return. That was a big one. Brings up first and 10 ball at the 27 for the Wildcats, their third possession of the game. First possession once again resulted in a nine yard touchdown by Braden Smith. Blair, handoff goes to Offord. Offord shakes one tackle, that was Kate Irwin, finally wrestled down by Ryan Johnson. But a nice gain there by Offord. The sophomore running back out of Orlando, Florida, went to Dr. Phillips High School. Brings up second and three ball at the 20. 46th and third. Third in there at left defensive end. We got Jackson Long in at linebacker along with Cade Irwin and River Walsh. It'll be Blair under center. Alford deep behind him. Fakes the handoff. Looking down, has Smith. And Smith's going to make that grab right before he gets out of bounds. That is going to be a 20-yard touchdown for Wesleyan as they go up 14-0. Time of the touchdown is 4-12. The Wildcats up now 13-0. Van Gutten to attempt the point after. And it is up and good. So Van Gutten hits the PAT, puts Indiana Wesleyan up 14-0. Looking at Wesleyan up next, they have Trinity International on the road. That's a natural surface there out of Deerfield, Illinois. But then they'll host Siena Heights, host Marion, then be on the road for number four, Concordia. And actually, Concordia is not ranked number four anymore after the loss last week to the Cougars. They're now ranked number 11.
St. Francis once again hosting Siena Heights. And then we'll be on the road at Lawrence Tech and at Taylor Kicking off to, to finish up the regular two. season. And Ben Von Gunten. Von Gunton with the kickoff back deep is Adams. The up men are Nick Brickens along with Casey Call. High kick is caught at the six. Adams with a return left. Beautiful block there by Casey Call. Another one by Christian Bella who knocks out two guys. And Van Gunton's going to take him out at the 48 yard line. What a return! by Mike Adams, that's a return of 44 yards for the freshman defensive back out of Ben Davis High School, Indianapolis, Indiana. An outstanding return and some even better blocks there. Casey Call leading the way and then a huge block by the senior Christian Bella. Took out two guys right there at the sideline. Brings up first and 10 ball at the 47. 403 remaining here in the first quarter. Pistol formation. Fakes the handoff to Martell Williams, looking deep, and ooh, just underthrows that ball to Matt Kamikiewicz. Defended on the play by number 36, Adam Shantz, the junior linebacker. So he Simmons just having a hard time pulling the trigger right now. He's leaving a lot of his throws short. We saw that on the pass that skipped to Dan Rixey on the last possession. Here on second and 10. It's Williams in the backfield, and Casey Call at the right wing. Handoff goes to William. Lead blocker, Ryder Burchett, and a beautiful run. That's going to bring up a first down gain of about 13 yards on the play for Martell Williams. Brings up first and 10, ball at the 35-yard line. Got Thomas Nolan here on the main camera that you guys are watching. Thomas doing a fantastic job here filming for the University of St. Francis. Handoff to Martell Williams. Big hole there on the right. Nice block by Dan Rixey holding his block. That's going to be another big gainer, this time of about six yards. How about Martell Williams? Only a junior. After P.J. Dean went out in that Robert Morris game, that made, they call him Telly Martell Williams, the main back. The, fan, the stands are absolutely packed here at Bishop Darcy Stadium. An estimated 4,150 fans in attendance. As last week, they got to witness the miracle at Mirror Lake. And that ball caught by Rixie and Justin Johnson simultaneously. And they're going to give it an interception. Rixie definitely had all of that. In baseball, the tie goes to the runner. I thought in football, the tie goes to the offensive player, but they're going to give an interception to Indiana Wesleyan. Wow. So that'll bring up a first and 10. Ball at the 27. I don't understand the double numbers and the two players that wear number one are both DBs. So obviously they can't play at the same time. Usually it's an offensive player and a defensive player. Either way, shotgun formation with Alford. Offset, he takes the handoff. Alford following his blockers. That was Miles McClendon from behind helping with the stop. Jalen Moss coming in late. And off the bottom of the pile is Ethan Thur. And gingerly coming up is Andrew McCormick. Ethan Third, just a redshirt freshman. Once again, the Cougars a little banged up right now and are very, very young. Second eight from the 29. Offered to the left of Blair. Blair's going to find him out in the flats. Breaks the tackle by Jalen Moss. Tracking him down is going to be Nick Lucas. Pushes him out at the 42-yard line. That is a gain of 30 yards. Moss had him wrapped up there in the flats. Just ran right through the tackle. And Nick Lucas chases him down. Nick Lucas is the... Uh, 
prototypical kind of defensive player that you want on your defense brings power and speed from that linebacker position. You saw it right there as he was able to track down Offord, knocking him out there at the 39-yard line. First and 10. Inside two minutes to play, Blair under center. New running back in, and he's met in the backfield. I believe that was Matt Schwartz making the tackle. That was Wade Phillips. Once again, Phillips entering today as the team's leading rusher with 211 yards. Alford entering today, only four carries for 17 yards. So not a whole lot of video there for Alford heading into today, but he's been getting the bulk of the carries. Wade Phillips, a freshman, 5'11", 175 out of Trenton, Ohio. Shotgun and in motion there is Braden Smith. And wow, Blair was looking at Smith the whole time. That's broken up by Ryan Johnson. Uh, Ryan Johnson last year as a junior was all MSFA first team. Brings up third and 10 ball at the 39. Guess we're not gonna get the cougar growl from the guy playing the music today. Maybe I can remind him at halftime. Alford just offset out of the pistol. And referee's gonna blow the whistles here. Looks like a timeout by Indiana, Indiana Wesleyan. Wesleyan first of the half. So we'll take a break with him, be right back with you. Developing athletes to be foundationally strong. Healthy and consistent training. Expert staff. Long-term athletic development. Parkview Sports Medicine Performance. Any athlete, any age, any skill. So here it's third and 10 now, ball at the 39-yard line. West Sand taking their first timeout of the game. Alford now offset to the right of Blair. Blair flushed out of the pocket going downfield. And great coverage by Ryan Johnson. Ball intended for Tommy Fawcett, number six. So once again, Hunley back to return and standing at the 10 yard line. Von Gunton. Von Gunton's been the special teams player of the week, I believe two times already this year for Westland. Back to punt it, and a bad snap! Chasing it down, Nate Place, as Van Gunton's gonna have to fall on it at the 30. Huge play there. Jay Siegel and Nate Place bearing down on the punter as the Cougars are gonna take over in great field position here, first and 10 from the 31. That's another thing that Matt Schwartz said in the interview this week was he felt the Cougars could capitalize on some Indiana Wesleyan miscues. He Simmons. Looking for Dan Rixey. Rixey doing a great job shielding the defender. That's a touchdown, Cougars. 31 yard strike to Dan Rixey. 
Rixie with his second touchdown of the season. And this, folks, is a big one, getting the Cougars on the board with 46 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Beautiful job by Rixie right there. Just kind of slowed up his route, keeping the defender on his hip. And Gavin Gardner, PAT attempt is good. Cougars now down 14 to seven. Oh, but things are heating up here at Bishop Darcy Stadium. Be Gavin Gardner coming out to kick it for St. Francis. Do apologize, folks. I Let's go, don't have any in-game stats. I'm actually broadcasting from on top of the press box due to our complications with the radio crew. But nonetheless, it was a great touchdown reception by Dan Rixie, the senior from Lafayette Jeff High School out of Lafayette, Indiana. Deep in the Wildcats, number one, Justin Johnson. Justin Johnson back deep for the Wildcats. Johnson entering today with 235 yards, kick return yards on 10 attempts. He averages 23.5 per return. Gardner's kick gonna be fielded at the two yard line and Johnson slips, falls right at the four. Cougar defense going to be bearing down here on the Wildcats as they have it inside the five-yard line. And out there for St. Francis is big number 55, Kyle Miazga, the freshman defensive tackle from Leo, Indiana, goes six foot five, 277 pounds. Miazga seeing his first action on the year. I don't believe he has a recorded tackle. But that's exactly how it is, folks. Cougars banged up, so next man up, as Coach D likes to say. And that's going to be a quarterback sneak by Blair. He might have got a yard, maybe a yard and a half. <laughs> Blair, once again, the senior quarterback, transfer out of Ball State. Blair is from Tip City, Ohio. River Wash in on the tackle for St. Francis. And it looks like that's going to do it here for the first quarter. Indiana Wesleyan up 14 to nothing. And we'll be back right after this break here from Bishop Darcy Stadium. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our cameras. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Welcome back everybody to Bishop Darcy Stadium. Indiana Wesleyan up 14 to seven. And they have the ball second eight from their own six yard line. Cougar linebackers coming out, Cade Irwin, River Walsh, and Jackson Long. Jackson Long is also from Lake Central High School, the same high school as Nick Lucas, but they're just a year apart in age. Long is a red shirt freshman, Lucas a sophomore. Blair, handoff goes to Alford. Alford with a little bit of a hole. McCormick met him right in the hole as Alford falls forward for about a gain of two yards. 
So a great job by McCormick, who was playing quarterback two months ago. But he's got great instincts out there on the football field. That'll bring up a third and six ball at the eight. Big Rob Brown in at nose tackle. Rob, who played center last year on the offensive line, did a great job of shedding some weight. And he's quick out there for a nose guard. Blair out of the shotgun has offered off to his right. Offered going down in the seam, and it's overthrown. Good coverage there. That's River Walsh on the running back. But offered straight out of the backfield. Was looking deep. Blair wanted him the whole way. Blair a few times in this game has just stared down the receiver that he's throwing to. So Van Gunten is going to punt it, and it's Dylan Huntley back to return it. Remember, folks, Dan Rixey last year for the Cougars had two punt returns for a touchdown, and we got a false start. Looks like encroach, encroachment, no, false start, excuse me, on Indiana Wesleyan. Nick Lucas is letting them know. So that's going to go against number 90 from Indiana Westland. That's Christian Smith, the junior defensive lineman, 6'3", 248, from Mackinac, Illinois. So once again, it will be Von Gunton. Backed up deep. The Cougars is going to bring the heat here. Coach Wagner and the pump block, it's on. Von Gunton gets it away. Hunley's going to receive it at the 44-yard line. Plenty of space to run as he is met right at the 32. A big tackle by number seven. I believe that's Josh Davidson or Jesse Clement. They said number 44, Noah King. I saw number seven. So it's going to bring up first and 10, ball at the 32. He Simmons, his last pass was a 30-yard touchdown to Dan Rixey. This time the handoff goes to Martell Williams. Williams hesitates, finds the burst, and is draggling tacklers all the way down to the 17-yard line. Martell Williams having himself a day here in the first half for your Cougars. It's going to bring up first and 10 ball at the 18, 17 and a half yard line. Scoreboard says the 18. Rocky James wide left as he's going to go and reset here on the bottom of your screen. And that's Kamikawitz there in the slot. Martell Williams going to follow the block of Casey Call, and he is stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. Might have been a gain of about one yard. Zenden Dellinger also out there. Dellinger, the tight end offensive lineman, caught his first ever touchdown pass last week against Concordia. So a gain of one there by... Martell Williams offset to the left of Heath Simmons out of the shotgun. Ball at the 17. Dan Rixey up top. Duke Blackwell in motion. Flag going to go against the Cougs. Looks like a false start. Number 58 on the offense. Five yards from the lead. And that's going to go against number 58, the senior, Nick Shoemaker. Shoemaker, 6 foot 3, 266 pounds out of Avon, Indiana. Nick's been a three year starter here for St. Francis. Handoff goes to Blackwell, the reverse to Dan Rixey. Rixey can throw out of that, and he will to Rocky James in the end zone. Where's the pass? No PI, no pass interference call. So, Rocky James. James to Rixey, that is the connection right there, the duo of receivers. Rocky last year threw that pass, I believe it was to Will Chrisman 
for the two-point conversion that sent the game into overtime against Siena Heights. Rocky James, one of the Rocky James and Dan Rixey, two of the more electric players you'll find in NAIA football. Brings up third and 14 at the 22. Call in motion. He Simmons looks at him, goes to a second progression. Now his third, and that ball nearly picked off by Justin Johnson. Simmons passes in to number number six, Rocky James, is incomplete. And that brings up fourth down. So Heath is definitely going through his reads down there at quarterback. And you can tell with every single snap, he's getting more and more comfortable. Now that ball is really starting to fire out of his hand. So we have fourth and 14 with 12.34 remaining here in the second quarter. Eli Wallace now offset right to, him, to Simmons. Zen and Delling are gonna go out wide in the wide receiver position. Dellinger does go six foot seven, 290. Simmons looking downfield and he's got, oh, Rocky James. Rocky James started running before he caught the ball and it results in an incomplete pass. He Simmons with all kinds of time, great protection by the offensive line. But I really love how he Simmons is checking to the different wide receivers. And he had Rocky wide open. Rocky would have definitely gotten the first down there, maybe six. Either way, it's first and 10 ball at the 22. Switching to the left side is the tight end number 49, Charlie Hill. Handoff goes to Alford. Nick Lucas with the tackle. That'll be a gain of about five yards. Jalen Moss also in the area. Once again, a packed house here at Bishop Darcy Stadium. Not many events in Fort Wayne, Indiana bring an atmosphere like what you'll see on game day here at Bishop Darcy Stadium. Kevin Donnelly Field. Second five ball to 27. Offered once again. Pistol alignment just offset to the right. Offered out in the flats, and the pass goes to him. Johnson comes up. Offered shifty cutback there made Ryan Johnson miss, and you do not see that very often. Making the tackle was Jalen Moss. Ryan Johnson is as strong and as quick of a cornerback as you're going to find in NAIA football. And he's a super sure tackler and a big hitter, and that time offered. Made a miss with that little jump stop. Looking like Barry Sanders out there on the turf. First and 10, ball to 39. Two wide receivers to the left. Hand off to Offer, goes right up the gut, runs right into his offensive lineman. McCormick's there. Jamal Jackson. So that'll bring up a second five from the 44. New running back in the backfield. Not sure if that's Phillips. In motion, Braden Smith. Blair looking for Smith on the sideline, and Johnson had him smothered. Great coverage downfield by Ryan Johnson. That is gonna bring up third and five from the 44. Bringing back the Cougar growl on that great coverage by Johnson. Number 27, Damon Hunter in for the Cougars, sophomore cornerback. And the pass is complete. 
right at the first down marker. Looks like they're going to mark it at the 50, so that's the first down here for Westland. Making the catch was number 82, Raymond Shimlisky. Flag on the field. Might be holding on Wesley. Legal motion. Legal motion. And that was against Braden Smith, the junior wide receiver. Braden is from Wyoming, Michigan, went to Byron Central High School. So that first down is negated after the illegal motion. It'll bring up third and 10. Ball at the 39. Zach Blair, the senior quarterback, Smith in motion. Beautiful break up by Blake Schumacher. Hunter also in the area as that pass is intended for Smith. Blair's got that crazy motion there. He almost throws it from the hip. So Matt Kamikiewicz this time back to return the punt for St. Francis. Von Gunton to punt it. Wesleyan going in motion there with number 11 on that. That was Devin Dawson, or maybe it was Lauk. Tamo going to be knocked out at about the 29-yard line. So a good return there for Camo and a man down for St. Francis. We'll see who that is for the Cougars. Looks like it might be Sean Roche, number eight. Cougar defensive end James Jamisich just one sack away from setting a new program record. Chris Van Horn currently holds the record with for career sacks for St. Francis with 25.5. Van Horn playing in, I think it was like 2002 to 2005. That is Roche, the junior from Maryville, Indiana. Brings up second and two from the 18. Dean cuts out, bounces left, following the block of Dylan Hundley as he's knocked out of bounds at about the five yard line, gain of 13 on the play. PJ Dean himself has quite a burst. And wow. PJ looking like the PJ of old here showing no ill effects of that ankle injury that he suffered against Robert Morris in the first half. PJ also had, I believe it was like an 80 yard touchdown run in the Robert Morris game. First and five, first and goal I should say from the five. High snap, handoff to Dean. Be a gain of about two yards, tackled by number 11. Cam Locke. I have never seen this before. Usually, if players have the same numbers, one will be an offensive player, one will be a defensive player, like Manti Teo and Armando Allen for the Irish back in the day. But here, never mind. Second and goal from the four. Casey Call with the lead block. And P.J. Dean takes it up the gut for a Cougar touchdown. Four yard strike, P.J. Dean in four six. P.J. with his second touchdown of the season as Gavin Gardner comes in for the PAT. PAT attempt is good. We are tied at 14. So welcome back, PJ Dean. That is the truth.
We are tied up here from Bishop Darcy Stadium. Indiana Wesleyan came out with all the momentum. Cougars taking it over there towards the end of the first quarter. But he Simmons found Dan Rixey for a 31-yard touchdown pass with 46 seconds remaining. Off the Cougars, 87, Gavin Gardner. Indiana Wesleyan's done it to themselves too with the punt, the snap on the punt that sailed over the Von Gunn's head. And the kickoff return where the returner slipped at the four. There is Jalen Charlton in on kickoff. As Gavin Cardner, that's gonna be a pooch kick and a smart play by number 13 with the fair catch. Joshua Fusco, the defensive back, 5'11", 205, out of Zeeland, Michigan. I actually got a, got a chance to talk with Joshua's dad before the game, Joe Fusco. Played football at Defiance College out of Ohio. But Josh Fusco, one of the top running backs in the state of Michigan a year ago, now playing defense for Indiana Wesleyan. First and 10, ball to 34. Blair out of the shotgun, hands it off to Alford. Miles McClendon and Nick Lucas in on the tackle. Lucas got there first. That's gonna be a gain of about four yards. Brings up second and six. Second six, two wide receivers up top, and it's Smith on the bottom. Alford offset to the left. Blair's gonna find him in the flats, and he's got all kinds of room to run. Will run out at about the 48 for a first down. Gain of 11 yards on the play, the swing pass to, swing pass to Alford. So Wesleyan taking their time here, getting the line of scrimmage. Offered to the left of Zach Blair. Smith in motion, hand off to Blair, chasing on the plays of McCormick, and Ryan Johnson, no holding called on Johnson as Alford steps out at about the 26 yard line. That was a little ridiculous. Wow. <laughs> Folks, there's no home field advantage for St. Francis here at Darcy Stadium as we've seen throughout the past about three years, it seems like. Last year, last week was pretty crazy too as far as the refs are concerned, but that, how you miss that play right there on Ryan Johnson, shoulder pads nearly ripped off his head. Brings up first and 10 from the 31. This time the handoff, nice play, Jalen Moss. Tackle for a loss. That's Jesse Deglow, the freshman running back, 5'10", 200 out of Kettering, Ohio, Fairmont High School. Good play there by Jay Moss. Moss who had who was a leading tackler against Robert Morris earlier this year. He's out of Fishers, Indiana, Fishers High School, same school as freshman linebacker Emmanuel Davis. Second and 10 from the 31. Tight end switches to the right. Deglo out in the flats. Blair looking downfield and has Smith. Smith will retreat. He loses about three yards, but gets it back, lunging forward. That's a first down gain of about 16 yards on the play. Brings up first and 10 from the 14. Wesleyan has a first and 10 on the Cougar 14 yard line.
two wide receivers. That's Smith on the bottom. Once again, they're going to switch the tight end to the right. Offered offset to the left. Handoff goes to Offered, and he'll be met right at the line of scrimmage by Jamal Jackson. You can tell Jamal wants to get excited there, just scared that the referees are going to throw a flag. Apparently, you can't get excited after you make a big play here at Bishop Darcy Stadium. Second and 10 from the 14. Jamal, very charismatic, a great guy off the field. Once again, from Cathedral High School, where he played with Marquis Stepp, the brother of Cougar great Marcus Stepp. Marquis now a backup running back at USC. So Weston's going to take a timeout here with 1.46 remaining. Second and 10 from the 14. I chose St. Francis because they, they made a promise that I would have real world experience that I could take when I graduated and they delivered on that promise. For me, the classroom only gets you so far. So they're setting me up with an internship. I had a mentor that they, they set me up with that was a CEO of a DuPont hospital in, in Fort Wayne. They offer degrees in accounting, business administration, risk management and insurance, marketing, and finance. You know, they just did a great job of the full circle of not only the, the education, but also the experience. Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Call 260-266-4007 for more information. Indiana Heights and St. Francis. Missouri Baptist beat Trinity International 20 to 13. St. Ambrose beat Olivet Nass 17 to seven. And number 13 ranked St. Xavier beat Robert Morris 31 to 28. St. Xavier's only two losses on the season came against University of Wisconsin Whitewater, a powerhouse out of Division III, and to Concordia. They lost to the Cardinals at their place. Blair out of the shotgun. Alford out in the flats. Once again, all kinds of room coming up to make the tackle. No, Schumacher cannot bring him down, but Nick Lucas does. Gain of about six yards on the play. Down by 35, Nick, Lucas. Nick Lucas is absolutely everywhere. He's ubiquitous. There we go. Third and four from the eight. Cougar training staff attending to Rochers. They're going to put a soft cast on that left knee. So he is not going to be returning in this game. Looks like Wesleyan's going to have to burn their last time out here with 57 seconds remaining. And we'll take another break right before the end here of the second quarter. You're watching Cougar football here from Bishop Darcy Stadium. Give your home the curb appeal it deserves and trust Kurt's Mio to power wash your home. Additional services include concrete ceiling, deck and fence cleaning, driveway replacement, and stamped concrete. Just head on over to KurtzMio.com, request your virtual quote, and use the code Summit City for 15% off all power washing services today. That's KurtzMio.com, supporting the youth of Fort Wayne. For every victory, for every highlight, for every team in the Summit Athletic Conference, we've got you covered. Like, follow, and subscribe for all the latest. Welcome back to Bishop Darcy Stadium. Third and four from the eight yard line, 57 seconds remaining. Indiana Wesleyan has two touchdowns, both of them by Braden Smith. One of them rushing, and the other one was a 20-yard pass from Blair. Blair out of the shotgun. Fakes the handoff to Deglo, and oh, lofts it in there for a touchdown to number 49, Charlie Hill. Folks, that ball was lofted in the air. I thought it was getting picked. Wesleyan touchdown. 
Bond with the extra point for Indiana West. And number two, Ben Bond Gunton. So an eight yard touchdown gives Wesleyan the 20 to 14 lead here with 52 seconds remaining. Von Gunton to attempt the PAT. Folks, that ball was just lofted up there. It looks like it was anybody's. PAT's good, 21 to 14 is your score. 52 seconds remaining though, expect some fireworks here from your Cougars. Do not take a bathroom break. Just as good, makes the score. Indiana Wesleyan, 21. 52 seconds is plenty of time for Coach Kevin Donnelly and the University of St. Francis. Of course, Kevin Donnelly, once again, the active winningest football coach in all of college football with 330 wins under his belt. He's the NAIA's all-time leader. He's a model of consistency here at St. Francis. The whole St. Francis coaching staff has been together since 2009. So it's a great place to come and play football here as you know what you got every single year. And that's football. It's football 24-7 around these parts here at Bishop Darcy Stadium. Back deep is going to be Matt Kamakiewicz for USF. Von Gunton to kick it off. Coach D is in his 21st or 22nd season here at St. Francis and his 41st season overall. He's Anderson College's all-time leading wins coach. And that will be a touchback by Camo. <laughs> yeah, Coach D was at Anderson College for like six years, and he's still their all-time wins leader. I believe that's right. He was at Georgetown College where he won a national championship. I think that was 1991. Sorry, I don't have any of my notes with me. I did not think I was going to be calling the game today. 52 seconds remaining, first and 10. Ball at the 25. Dan Rixey on the bottom of your screen. Blackwell in the slot. Rocky James up top. Casey Call on the wing. Martell Williams in the backfield. Simmons going to hand it off to Williams, cuts back, and he's met right away. That was number 10 for Wesleyan. Peyton Marksbury. Our other camera operators, Morgan Carroll and Mariah Nicholson, two sophomore. Softball players, second and six from the 29. Once again, ha hand off to Williams, jumps outside. Rocky James still holding his block, a great James, great block by Rocky James, as that's gonna be a pickup of about 13 yards, Martell and that's gonna do it carry. for the half. Tackle by seven, Josh Davidson. Yeah, Josh Davidson with the tackle, looks like seven seconds remaining. And See if the Cougars give it to Martell Telly Williams for a third straight time. Simmons looking deep, has Blackwell and knocked away at the last second. A great defensive play by Josh Davidson or Jesse Clement, one of the number seven linebackers on the roster. One second remaining, first and 10. Blackwell was wide open there. It was great closing play by the defensive back. Martell Williams once again up the gut. We'll take it to the 49 yard line. So that's a gain of six. And that's going to do it here for the first half. Indiana Wesleyan up 21 to 14. Folks, we're going to take a break here for halftime and we'll be back with you for the start of the second half. You're watching Cougar football here from Bishop Darcy Stadium.
The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Parkview Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field. Dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it. Certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. Get mad about blue. Get mad about your Fort Wayne mad ants. When looking for the best basketball action in town, it's the... Uh... Go to FortWayneMadAnts.com for the complete game schedule. See your Fort Wayne mad ants in action. Get mad about blue.
I chose St. Francis because they, they made a promise that I would have real world experience that I could take when I graduated and they delivered on that promise. For me, the classroom only gets you so far, so they're setting you up with an internship. I had a mentor that they, they set me up with that was a CEO of a DuPont hospital in, in Fort Wayne. They offer degrees in accounting, business administration, risk management and insurance, marketing and finance. You know, they just did a great job of the full circle of not only the, the education but also the experience. Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Call 260-266-4007 for more information. Parkview Sports Medicine, especially since I've been a pro, has been a place where my game has really been able to develop in multiple facets. Injury prevention, maintenance, physical therapy, weightlifting, agility work, you know, all the things that I need to do in order to have an NBA body. This is the place for me to go when I come back home and I need to get a workout in. Always welcome me back with open arms. Parkview Sports Medicine. Game on. Developing athletes to be foundationally strong healthy and consistent training. Expert staff. Long-term athletic development. Parkview Sports Medicine Performance. Any athlete, any age, any skill level. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline toughness and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. Thank you for supporting Summit City Sports. For the last several years, we've provided the Fort Wayne community and beyond with coverage of a variety of sports, thanks to our title sponsorship from Parkview Sports Medicine. Since we began in 2015, our annual budget has covered the cost of videographers and commentators to over 300 plus games each year. New equipment and maintenance of that equipment, along with increased broadcast rights fees from the IHSAA. This season, we're reaching out to friends, families, and local businesses for additional sponsorships and donations. You can help us grow and get coverage to your favorite team or sport. A Summit City Sports sponsorship or donation will help make that happen. We have the goal of bringing fans live stream games of every SAC game we cover. With the additional funds, we'd invest in mobile internet devices, allowing us to bring our supporters every SAC conference football, and boys and girls basketball games live, as well as more coverage for sports like cross country, tennis, golf, swimming, wrestling, track and field, baseball, and softball. For more information on sponsorships or how to donate, visit SummitCitySports.com. Looking for a way to naturally aid in soothing aches, pains, and sore muscles and reduce inflammation from the skin? Want a relief in minutes? Try Alleviate. Contact Hillary Didier for details. You can find her at didier.hillary at gmail.com or call her at 260-312-1599. Brooks steals it, tips it away to himself. He'll go to the hoop and slam it down. They attack, they get a great shot. Here he comes. And look at Shot hits the post. And the center entry to Luke Hipster shot scores. The rush comes. Oh, almost picked, picked off by Ethan Hoover. And the takedown. It's the comets. Comets falling from the sky. 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 The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. 
Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Parkview Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field, dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it, certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes, and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit Parkview sportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. Get mad about blue. Get mad about your Fort Wayne mad ants. When looking for the best basketball action in town, it's a to FortWayneMadAnts.com for the complete game schedule. See your Fort Wayne Mad Ants in action. Get mad about blue. Give your home the curb appeal it deserves and trust Kurt's Mio to power wash your home. Additional services include concrete sealing, deck and fence cleaning, driveway replacement, and stamped concrete. Just head on over to KurtzMio.com. Request your virtual quote and use the code Summit City for 15% off all power washing services today. That's KurtzMeo.com, supporting the youth of Fort Wayne. The Acme Bar and Grill, where neighbors meet. A Fort Wayne tradition since 1941. We feature nightly dinner specials along with our iconic pizza, wings, and pork tenderloins and barbecue in our family-friendly atmosphere with a retro flair. Additionally, we offer a full bar with 26 beers on tap from various Midwest breweries. We also have an area perfect for private events such as meetings, reunions, and banquets that holds up to 50 people. The Acme Bar and Grill, located in the heart of East State Village, where neighbors Welcome to the Summit City, home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our cameras. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. For every victory, for every highlight, for every team in the Summit Athletic Conference, we've got you covered. Like, follow, and subscribe for all the latest. Keep your skills on point and take advantage of the Always 100 basketball camps. The Holiday Hoops Developmental Camp is for ages pre-K through 8th grade. You'll work on shooting, dribbling, passing, and defense December 24th through January the 2nd on Tuesday and Thursdays. And the Always 100 Pro Camp 2020 takes you to the next level. It's the real college experience for grades 1 through 12. It's June 8th through June 11th at Trine University. Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Parkview Ortho Express, located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, gives you access to quick care and orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Parkview Ortho Express is open Monday through Thursday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Call 260-266-4007 for more information.
Welcome back, everybody, to Bishop Darcy Stadium. Just moments away from the start of the second half. Looking at some of the first half numbers, Indiana Wesleyan with 200 total yards on 37 plays. St. Francis, 177 total offensive yards on 30 plays. Indiana Wesleyan had 13 first downs to St. Francis, 9. 69 rushing yards for the Wildcats, 98 for St. Francis. 131 passing yards for Wesleyan, 79 for your Cougars. P. Simmons, 6 of 13 passing, one interception, has 79 yards and a touchdown. He's been sacked once. Zach Blair, 10 for 17, 131 yards passing, two touchdowns. Leading receivers for Indiana Wesleyan is Devodney Alford, five catches for 62 yards and a long at 32. Braden Smith, four catches for 61 yards and a touchdown. Charlie Hill, one catch, eight yards, touchdown for Charlie Hill. For the University of St. Francis, Martel Williams carried the ball 11 times for 79 yards, an average of 7.2 yards per carry. Devontae offered, Devodney offered 13 carries, 83 yards, an average of 6.4 yards per carry. He Simmons once again came out, folks, looking a little anxious, but really settled in, settled down. And towards the end of that first quarter there, hit Dan Rixey on a 31-yard touchdown. That was followed by a P.J. Dean four-yard run to tie the game up at 14. Indiana Wesleyan went ahead 21-14 with 52 seconds remaining in the second quarter. Charlie Hill, an eight-yard pass from Zach Blair. Of course, Braden Smith had the nine-yard touchdown run, and Smith caught a 20-yard pass from Blair to open up the scoring. So it was 14 nothing Wesleyan, then tied up in 14, and now it's 21-14, and back to return it will be Matt Kamakiewicz for the Cougars. Kamo, pretty much the same spot that the last kickoff was, and he will down it for a touchback. After the touchback, the Cougars will start first and 10 on their own 25-yard line. Cougar fans, let's get this second half started with a little t-shirt slingshot, courtesy of Fort Financial Credit Union. So it's going to bring up first and 10, ball at the 25-yard line for the Cougars. Leading St. Francis in tackles, not a shocker, Nick Lucas. He had nine in the first half. And for Indiana Wesleyan, Lamon Matheson had six tackles. It's Martell Williams in the backfield. P.J. Dean seen limited action in this game as Williams going to make it all the way to about the 27-yard line, 28. Some extracurriculars after the play by a couple 74s. Of course, 74 for the University of St. Francis. That's Reese Roney. Line. The great junior left tackle. And number 74 for Indiana Westland is Owen Perkins. Perkins is a junior D lineman, 6'1, 300, out of Sims, Indiana. Second and six from the 29. Call the lead blocker there for He Simmons. Simmons bounces it out wide. And taking the first hit Heath at Simmons Heath was, I believe that's number 41. Marksbury was in on the tackle along with number 11, Cam Locke. Locke got to him first. Third and one now from the 34, Martell Williams. He's got it, and he's going to burst through. Martell Williams, touchdown, Cougars. A 66-yard touchdown run for Martell Williams, and... St. Francis now down 21 to 20. What a run by Williams. Now 
Now it's Gavin Gardner to attempt the PAT. And it's up and in. We are tied at 21 with 13.50 left to play here in the third quarter. Martell Williams, wow, just a little bit of a hole and Martell's got a burst, one of the fastest players for the University of St. Francis. Hit the hole and was gone. Got to the second level and beyond and nobody was gonna touch Martell Williams on that 66 yard run to the house. For Williams, that's his first touchdown on the day and his fourth touchdown on the season. Williams now with over 150 rushing yards in this game. He was fantastic there in the first half. Was Williams. So Justin Johnson deep for the Wildcats. And it'll be Gavin Gardner to kick it off. River Walsh to the right of Gardner and Emmanuel Davis to the left, two freshman linebackers. Johnson's gonna take it at the eight. Going right up and Emmanuel Davis makes the tackle, sure-handed tackle by Davis at the 17 yard line. You know, a lot's been made with St. Francis and graduating the best trio of linebackers the NAI has ever seen in Marcus Stepp, Pearson Har Harnish, and Eric Dunton. But I'm gonna tell you what, there's a trio of linebackers here at St. Francis right now that are freshmen that are real good. And you just saw Emmanuel Davis, he's one of them, make the tackle. Blair out of the shotgun. Handoff and bouncing it out is Alford. Nick Lucas in on the stop. Looks like it's gonna be a gain of about four yards. Bring up second and six. Ball at the 21 yard line. Offered once again in the backfield. Set in motion there, number 49, Charlie Hill, who had the last touchdown reception for the Wildcats. Offered met right away. Big time play. That is Ethan Third, number 46. Third red shirt freshman at 6'1", 215 pounds from Jay County High School out of Portland, Indiana. Third and Kevion Evans bring a lot of speed off the edge here for the Cougars. So loss of two on the play brings up third and eight. Blair, motions offered to his, to his left. Pass, and that's gonna be broken up by Mike Adams, the freshman, number 37. Adams, a kick returner also for the Cougars, seeing some time here at cornerback, breaks it up. That's a PBR, pass breakup. That'll bring up fourth and 13. Ball at the 14 yard line, Kamakiewicz back to return it. Kamakiewicz sharing time with Dylan Hundley returning punts and flag on the field. Fall start. Going to go against number one, Justin Johnson. Johnson out wide up top. He's one of the gunners. Jack Gibbons covering Johnson. And on the other side of the field, it's number 31 for the Cougars, Brandon Lockwood. Von Gunton's punt is off. And... Camo is going to let, let that ball roll about to the 49 yard line. Come on, guys. Come on. Is 
So we have a flag down. We'll check with the official. Tied at 21 here. 12.04 left to play in the third quarter. So offsetting personal fouls here for Indiana Wesleyan. It was Ishmael Avela and River Walsh for the University of St. Francis. Avela is a junior defensive lineman, six foot 231, speedy DN. And I'll bring up first and 10. Ball at the Indiana Wesleyan 49 yard line. Shotgun formation. Handoff goes to Martell Williams. Bounces out left. Williams one on one with Johnson is going to be pushed out for a gain of about five yards. And they're going to mark that ball. Looks like they're going to mark it at the 45. Looked like the 44 from up here. That'll bring up second and six. Two wide receivers out wide, Rixey and Matt Kamakiewicz. Rocky James up top as the handoff goes to Williams. Another big hole for Ro Martell Williams as he'll take it down all the way to the 32-yard line. A gain of 13 on the play. Looks like they're going to spot it at the 33, so a gain of 12 on the play. And that results in a one run dodge. So it'll be first and 10 from the 33, and the Cougs are rolling with 11-12 left here in the third. Casey Call on the left wing. In the backfield, it looks like P.J. Dean. Dean's going to take the handoff. Cuts right, makes one man miss. Runs into a tackler, but pushes the pal forward. Looks like he got all the way to about the 28-yard line. That'll be a gain of five yards on the play. Second five from the 28, it's number 28 in the backfield. Simmons, shotgun formation. Hand off to Dean. That's Reese Roney with the lead block as Dean's gonna take it all the way to the 21, gain of seven yards on the play. Reese Roney pulling from his left tackle position. You know, in high school, he was a heck of a basketball player, averaging nearly a double-double during his senior year. That's Reese Roney, the left tackle, pulling on that play, play and paving the way. Get off the tracks when the train's coming through. Number 74, first and 10 from the 21. P.J. Dean just to the right of Simmons. That's Rixie in motion, goes right through the legs of Heath. It's going to be a loss of about seven yards. Loss of eight yards on the play to the 29. Brings up second and 18. Second and 18. This time Eli Wallace set to the left of Simmons. Has Rixie on the crossing pattern. Dan Rixey in space. And that's a play goes out of bounds as Rixey's going to take it all the way to the 13. That'd be a gain of 16 yards on the play. So after the loss of eight yards, Rixey gets 16. Brings up third and two. Hand off to Eli Wallace. Wallace following his blockers. 
Gain of four yards and a Cougar first down. That'll bring up first and goal for St. Francis. Eli Wallace, junior running back, 5'10", 211, out of LaGrange, Indiana, Lakeland High School. Ball right on the 10 yard line. As the handoff's gonna go to Wallace. Wallace following the block of Casey Call, taken down about the four yard line. Tackled on the play by number seven, Josh Davidson. He's up second and four. Second goal from the four. Martell Williams back into the game. Duke Blackwell in motion. The fake sweep, and Williams in for a touchdown. Four-yard touchdown for Martell Williams, and the Cougars take their first lead of the game, 27-21. Martell Williams with back-to-back -to -back touchdowns for the Cougars. As Gavin Gardner attempts the PAT. And it's good. St. Francis up 28-21. What a game for Martell Williams. We'll look out for him to be the MSFA Offensive Player of the Week if this continues. He's nearly at 200 yards rushing with two touchdowns. University of St. Francis, that offensive line has been on fire since about Two minutes left to play in that first quarter. Actually, Martell Williams has been doing it all game long. And now the Cougars looking to take full control of this game. Gardner with the kick. And once again, it's going to be Justin Johnson to return it. Gardner's kick is going to be Call at the one yard line, Johnson off to the left. Has blockers in front. Hunter gets past him and he'll be knocked out of bounds by number 85, Jay Siegel. So a nice return by Johnson of about 25 yards. Johnson on the return, four down long by 85, Jay Siegel of the Cougars. Jay Siegel, a sophomore receiver from Lafayette Jefferson High School for St. Francis. 26 yard line. Bring up first and 10 from the 26 for Zach Blair and the Wildcats. Once again, that's Hill. And a nice tackle by Cade Irwin. As Alford takes it to about the 27. It's like a gain of maybe one yard. Charlie Hill along with number 41, Evan Elston. A lot of motion there from tight end to the wing position. As this time Hill just to the left of Blair. It's offered. Now in motion into the flats. Blair screen pass, finds Hill and he's tackled right away. River Walsh stepping up large. Stopping that screen pass for a gain of about two yards. That's the freshman linebacker, River Walsh, six foot, 208 pounds from Maryville, Indiana, Andrean High School. That'll bring up third down and six. 
More motion from Wesley, and that's what Schwartz was talking about. They do a lot of different stuff, which could present some problems for an offense. Blair finds Smith. And nice, sure tackle by River Walsh after a gain of about eight yards. Good open field tackle there by the freshman backer. Actually, it looks like a gain of nine yards to the 39. Nonetheless, that's going to bring up a first and 10. Coach Donnelly this week in his weekly interview for his TV show said, River Walsh has what you can't teach, and that's that linebacker instinct to fly to the ball. Blair out of the shotgun. Looks like Walsh is going to come in on the blitz and does. Hand off to Alford. He was walled off, and McCormick nearly makes a tackle for a loss. And Kyle Miazga cleans it up. <laughs> Loss of about six yards on the play. The freshman, Kyle Miazga, throwing his weight around with a big tackle for a loss. But starting that play was Andrew McCormick making noise in the backfield. It's going to bring up second and 15 from the 34. Cougars have been in dominant form here to start the second half and much of the second quarter. As that's Jackson Long makes it to the right side on the blitz. Alford, that one through his hands, incomplete. Indiana Wesleyan's had a lot of success out there in the flats with the running back. Alford that time went through his hands. Once again, Alford in the first half had 62 yards receiving on five catches. He also had 83 yards rushing on 13 attempts. Those are first half numbers for Alford. Third and 15 now, ball at the 34. Once again, Smith in motion. Braden Smith, the star wide receiver, just a junior. Jamal Jackson with the pressure. Nick Lucas and making the tackle from behind. That's River Walsh. Excuse me, that was Ethan Thurr with the tackle, number 46. Thurr for a defensive end has linebacker speed as he was trailing on that play and caught him from behind. Thur, who came into the program as an inside linebacker, shifting over to the DN position. Legal shift, number two on the offense. That's going to be a legal shift on Indiana Wesleyan decline. It's going to bring up fourth and 15. No, excuse me, fourth and nine after the six yard game. Two returners back now for St. Francis, Dylan Hunley and Matt Kamikawitz. Von Gunton, Manuel Davis was on number 11 there, Lauk, who was in motion. Kamikawitz receives it at the 12 yard line. Makes the first tackler miss the second and pushed out of bounds at about the 24 yard line. Looks like they'll mark him at the 25. So a nice return of 13 yards by Matt Kamikawitz, whose older brother Brandon Kamikawitz was a long snapper here for the Cougars. From 2007 to I think 2012, eight to 12, he was redshirted. Brings up first and 10 from the 25. Martell Williams lined up behind Heath Simmons. Rixie on the bottom of your screen. Will Williams once again. The patience that Martell is showing. Folks, he's getting better and better with every single game. There's no doubt about the burst of speed that he has. And now he's waiting patiently for the holes to develop. And once he sees them, Boom, he's off like a rocket. 
just like what we saw with the 66-yard touchdown run to open up the third quarter. The referee blows the whistle, and we'll see what he has to say. Please, Please reset, reset the game, game clock. Four, seventeen. Four seventeen. Thank you. So we're going to reset the game clock to four seventeen, which is five seconds less. So four seventeen. Let the play in the third. Second and three from the thirty-two. That's Nick Brickens in the backfield on the left wing. As the handoff goes to Williams, nice block by Reese Roney, but Indiana Wesleyan defense is stacked. Coming off the pile, that's number 10, Peyton Marksbury. That'll bring up third and three. This time Williams offsets the left. Rixie on the bottom of your screen. Rocky up top. Simmons has Rixie on a crossing pattern. He's got space. Lots of green for Dan Rixie. And he will be knocked out at the 38-yard line. That's a gain of 40 yards and a Cougar first down. Dan Rixey's got the juice. Rixey's going to come off the field here. It'll be first and 10 now from the 38. Dan Rixey at 5 foot 10 can dunk a basketball with ease. Shotgun formation, or excuse me, pistol formation. That ball went right through the hands of Simmons. I think that's about the third time we've seen that this game going to be a loss this time of about six yards. So that'll bring up second and 16. Rixie, that's the second time on that crossing pattern where he was wide open. And that last one for a big gainer, 30 yards. Second and 16 from the 44. Simmons handoff to P.J. Dean. Dean's got room to run, and a nice tackle coming up on the play was number five, Lamon Matheson. You'll remember Lamon Matheson led Indiana Wesleyan at halftime with six tackles. Jesse Clement with five, Cameron Lauk with four, Adam Shantz with three. Lamont Matheson is a senior defensive back at six foot one ninety-five. So Indiana Wesleyan once again in their second year of competition, but they got some upperclassmen on this squad. Third and ten from the thirty-eight. Shoot, when you look at the starters, Indiana Wesleyan might be more veteran than St. Francis at this point. Cougars with a redshirt freshman in at quarterback, the senior Blair at Indiana Wesleyan. So 148 remains here in the third quarter, and the Cougars have been pretty dominant here in the second half. Once again, St. Francis will host Sienna Heights, the number one the number 21 ranked team in the country next Saturday here at Bishop Darcy Stadium with a 12 p.m. kickoff. Indiana Wesleyan entering today with 137 points scored on the season. St. Francis with 160. Cougars averaging 354 yards per game. Wesleyan at 344. And St. Francis outrushing Indiana Wesleyan 638 to 596. Once again, that's entering today. PJ Dean lined up 
Offset right. Simmons in the shotgun. Heath looking left and goes to Casey Cole with a wonderful catch. Casey Cole adjusting to the ball in the air. Turned his body to the right and picked it right out of the air. Folks, that's a gain of 21 yards and another Cougar first down. How about Casey Call entering today as the team's third leading receiver with 133 yards receiving. For Call, that's his first catch of the game. Casey was also part of a state championship football team at Tri-West Hendricks High School. First and 10 from the 17. P.J. Dean walled off, looking to cut it back and now going up the gut. But just too many Wildcats pursuing to the ball. Like Coach Kevin Donnelly said, Indiana Wesleyan, a team of character and they are relentless. They're not gonna quit playing football. It does not matter what the score is. Wesleyan playing snap to whistle here in their second year of the program. Second and 11 at the 18. Simmons flushed out of the pocket, rolling right, lofts it, and that's going to be out of bounds. Applying the pressure for Wesley in number 48. That's Avila. Avila earlier in this corner, in this quarter, flat flag for the personal foul. So that's going to bring up third and 11. Just 21 seconds remaining here in the third. Cougars looking for seven more here. Eli Wallace offset right of Heath Simmons. Simmons, and that one just thrown behind Casey Call as the defender was quickly coming up with the defense. So Emerson Eber, or excuse me, Gavin Gardner here looking for his 23rd career field goal, which would tie him with Emerson Eber for a new, for a program record in career field goals. Ball at the 18, so this is going to be a 35 yard attempt. It's Joe Nepper, the punter with the hold. Gardner, it's up. And it's in. 31-21. Cougars take the lead. Gavin Gardner with his 23rd career field goal, which ties him with Emerson Eber for a program record with career field goals. And folks, Gavin Gardner is just a junior. He's got one more year here left at St. Francis. He's from Van Wert, Ohio, Van Wert High School, 5'9", 182. Played a little baseball at Van Wert. And Gavin's girlfriend, Vivian Goodpaster, is the starting catcher for the softball team. Just in case you were wondering. 10-point advantage here for USF with 14 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Back deep once again is going to be Justin Johnson. The kick is off. That one bouncing at the 15, caught at the 7. And nice play, making the tackle there is number 38. Jalen Charlton and Jay Siegel. Boy, Jalen went down there and blew that play up. Jalen Charlton, who was one of the top running backs in Fort Wayne when he ran the ball for the Bishop Lures Knights, went to Davenport two years ago and has since transferred to St. Francis. 
just like Matt Schwartz, who went to Siena Heights, then transferred back to St. Francis. Schwartz, what a great career he's had in Cougar Blue. Handoff goes to offer. Schwartz makes the tackle. Right on cue, that's a gain of about three yards. Looks like Jamal Jackson, Jalen Moss also in on the tackle. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. St. Francis up 31-21 with all the momentum heading into the fourth quarter. You're watching Cougar football here from Bishop Darcy Stadium. The Kelly Automotive Group is simple, transparent, reliable, simple. Our customer specialists make buying a car easy and fun. Transparent. Our price listed is the best price. No hassle, no gimmicks. Reliable. Buy with confidence and peace of mind. We work hard to ensure the best value however you shop. Come see us in Decatur at the 2733 Auto Mall and shop seven brands in one location. The Kelly Automotive Group. Simple, transparent, reliable. Parkview Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field, dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it, certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes, and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit Parkview sportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. Welcome back everybody. Here in the fourth quarter, your number seventh ranked University of St. Francis Cougars up 31 to 21 over the Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats. In motion, that's Smith. Smith's going to catch it in the flats. Nice block by number 49. That's Hill for the Wildcats. And stuck, Andrew McCormick, Jalen Moss, and Jamal Jackson, along with, I believe, Ethan Thur. Thur was there first for St. Francis. I'll tell you what, for a redshirt freshman, Ethan Thur has had a fantastic season. Injuries to Mitchell Thornberry and Ethan Vanover and James Jamisich has put a lot of pressure on these two redshirt freshmen, Thur and Kevion Evans, to produce, and they have answered the call. It's next man up here at the University of St. Francis. Third and four ball at the 26. Blair looking downfield. Timing pattern broken up by Jalen Moss. Great play by number four. Jalen Moss, the junior defensive back, six foot, 200 pounds. That's going to bring up fourth and four from the 26. Blair threw that ball. Smith hadn't even turned around yet, but J Moss was all over it. Von Gunton to punt it back deep. Hundley and Kamakawitz. Flag on the play, and that's a worm burner. Picked up by Hunley at about the 36 yard line. And he cannot elude that first tackler, number 19, Donovan Shelton. Shelton, a sophomore defensive back, 5'8, 180. He's out of Centerville, Ohio. Tackles by 19, Donovan Shelton. Let's see what the flag is. And Cougars are going to send another illegal shift here by Wesleyan. Once again, folks, they like to do a lot of trickery, if you will, with the formations and the shifting. And like Schwartz said, that's something that St. Francis is going to capitalize on. And that's exactly what the Cougars have done. So we're going to re-kick it. They'll march the Wildcats back five yards. It's going to bring up fourth and nine. Of course, the head coach for the Wildcats, Jordan Langs, came from Wheaton College, where he coached under legendary D3 coach Mike Schweider. Schweider out of the CCIW. Von Gunn, that one nearly blocked by Jay Siegel. That's going to be picked up by Kamakawitz at the 28. 
Camo cannot get out wide and finally does, pushed out at the 35. They're gonna throw a flag on Emmanuel Davis. Looks like they're gonna call him on the crack back block. Looked pretty clean. Yeah, looked, looked pretty clean to us. Let's see if we've got. They're going to call an illegal block on Emmanuel Davis. I'll take it back all the way to the 14. For St. Francis, so it'll be first and 10. Martell Williams back out there for the Cougars in the shotgun formation. Casey Call on the right wing. Rixey up top. Handoff goes to Williams. Good play there by the Wesleyan defense number one, Justin Johnson. Read that play perfectly, but still it's a gain of about two yards. All the way up to the 16 yard line. Brings up second and eight. Nick Brickens now on the left wing. Simmons has Martell Williams to his right. Looking downfield, goes to Rixie on the out pattern. And that's a gain of nine yards and a Cougar first down for Dan Rixie. Outstanding job, Keith Simmons to Dan Rixey. Of course, Simmons did hook up with Dan Rixey in the second quarter, or the end of the first quarter, for a 30-yard touchdown strike. Hand off to Williams. He'll be bottled up right at the line of scrimmage. And for Heath Simmons, remember, that's his second touchdown pass of the season. P.J. Dean with a four-yard touchdown run. And Martell Williams with touchdown runs of 66 and four yards. That's the scoring for St. Francis. And a Gavin Gardner field goal, which ties a program record for career field goals made. Simmons. Crossing pattern this time to Casey Call. Call can lower the shoulder. Takes it all the way to the 32 yard line. He'll be tackled by number seven, Josh Davidson. Casey Call had a big stick on the sideline in that Marion game. Of course there was a flag on that gainer. Third and three from the 37. Williams to the right of Simmons. Nice shot to Dylan Hundley. He was wrestled to the ground by Julian Cornwall. Check that, Massimo Pegliani, the other number four. That's a DB. Brings up first and 10 from the 36. Zenden Dellinger at the right tight end position. Nick Brickens in at the wing. Handoff goes to Williams. And once again, nowhere to run for Martell Williams. Williams Indiana game. Wesleyan really Brickens loading the box Josh here. Davidson. Wesleyan saying, if anything, we're going to stop Martell Williams. you got to beat us through the air. Dellinger off the field. Rixey back on. Second and nine ball at the 37-yard line. 10.35 and counting. Your Cougars looking for win number five on the season. And back-to-back -back Ws. 
Shotgun. Fake handoff goes to Williams. And that's Kamakewitz. Looks like face masking on the play. No face mask going to be called. Unreal. Gain of about five yards. I know. Ball at the 42-yard line. Began at six yards by Kamo. Third and four. Simmons now with Eli Wallace to his right. Stack formation on the bottom. Rocky James and Nick Brickens. Great job by Simmons in the pocket. He's got a first down. Heath with a four yard gain. And the referees are, are obviously enjoying watching the game instead of calling the game. High snap, Wallace, and on fourth and one, a defensive stop. So not a good spot there by the referees as they left it probably about two yards short of where Simmons slid. Two yard difference there on that spot is pretty much clear as day. Simmons crossed the first down and then slid. Okay, so first and 10, ball at the USF 44, Blair under center. And flea flicker. Cougars are all over it as Ryan Johnson knocks it away from the intended receiver, number two, Braden Smith. Cougar defense was all over the trickery of Indiana Wesleyan as that was Blair who took the handoff, gave it to Wade Phillips. Excuse me, Blair handed it off to Wade Phillips, back to Blair. And the Cougars were all over. They snuffed that one out. That's good coaching for you. As the Cougars had the defense, the Cougar coaching staff had the defense prepared for that play. Second and 10 now from the 44. That's Hill in motion, lined up now on the left wing. Offered in right flats. Blair goes downfield looking for Smith. He's out of bounds. Blair's release reminds me of Cougar backup quarterback. Oh shoot, his name escapes me right now. Now an offensive coordinator of a Carroll High School who's actually Ohio's like all-time leading passer. Oh, forgive me, his name escapes me. So third and 10 from the 44. Blair out of the shotgun. He's gonna take off and run. Good defense by Damon Hunter along with, oh, they're gonna throw a foul flag on Damon Hunter. They're saying that Blair was sliding in that Hunter hit him late. Yeah, late flag, a late flag here by the referees. Oh, that wasn't even called on Hunter. That was called on Nick Lucas. And now another flag going to be thrown on St. Francis. Uh, somebody's getting yelled at. No, the microphone's on. Hey, folks, another reason to come to Bishop Darcy Stadium is never a dull moment. Referee had the mic on. We'll see how this transpires. So they're calling the USF coaches personal foul and they're just marching Indiana Wesleyan right on down the field. 
And they'll have it first and 10 from the 14. Cougar defense, time to step up. Nick Lucas getting hot down there, trying to rally the troops. Jamal Jackson as well. It'll be first and 10, ball at 14. That's Hill on the right wing, Alford in the backfield, Blair under center, handoff goes Alford! He's met right away! In the backfield, Miles McClendon! That's a loss of about five yards on the play. Cougar defense is hot right now. And Miles McClendon eating them up in the backfield. Brings up second down and 16, ball to 20. Hill once again in motion. Blair looking for Hill. He's going to take off, and Jamal Jackson makes the tackle as Blair falls to the 15 yard line. going to bring up third and 12. You guys will remember Charlie Hill did have the touchdown reception for the Wildcats that gave him 21 points. Bunch formation on the bottom of the screen. Receiver in motion. Blair empty backfield looking for Smith. Once again, timing pattern for Ryan Johnson says, not on my island. That's RJ Island out there. Von Gunton's gonna have to attempt a field goal. This one from 33 yards. Let's go Cougs, they're looking for a blocked field goal attempt here. 7.21 remaining in the fourth quarter. Kick is up and good. Once again, Ben Von Gunn ranks number one in NAIA, hitting all of his PATs. But he ranks number six in field goals, averaging 1.2 per game and entering today with six field goals. That's his seventh of the season. Ben Von Gunten. Von Gunten, a sophomore kicker from Spencerville, Indiana, Leo High School. So a solid kicker around these parts for many years. Opted to go to Indiana Wesleyan here in his second year of the program. So that makes the score 31 to 24. St. Francis on top. Mike Adams back deep with Nick Brickens and Casey Call, the upbacks. Nick Lucas and Jay Siegel, the up upbacks. Von Gunton to kick it off. Big boot, it's gonna sail in the air, be caught at the five. Adams with blockers in front. Mike saw a seam for a second, but it closed up quickly by the Wildcat kickoff team. Looks like that was number 83 with the tackle. Jake Keith, a freshman wide receiver at 6'3", 200. He's from Greenwood, Indiana. Center Grove High School, the Trojans. Of course, USF alum, national champion, left tackle, Alex Woods, also from Center Grove High School. He Simmons out of the shotgun. Rixie in motion. The handoff goes to Rixie on the sweep. He'll be knocked out after a gain of about three yards. That was Johnson with the hit. It's going to bring up second down and six. So a gain of four on the play. Line. 
pistol formation for Simmons. Call on the right wing. Handoff to Williams. Tackled in the backfield by number 36, Adam Shantz. The junior linebacker, six foot, 227. He's from Fulton, Michigan. Climax Scotts High School. Third and nine now after the three yard loss. The Wesleyan defense has been bearing down on Martell Williams here in the fourth quarter. Williams offset right of Simmons. Simmons looking downfield, flush from the pocket. And he'll be brought down for a loss of a yard by number three, Justin Brown. Simmons on the carry by number three, Justin Brown. And brings up fourth down. So mean Joe Nepper out to punt on fourth and nine from the 24. Two punt returners back now for the Wildcats. Mike Adams, your gunner, along with Jack Givens. And that's Damon Hunter, excuse me, as that ball goes out of bounds at about the 37. So Wesleyan gets the ball back here with 5.15 remaining in a seven point deficit. St. Francis last touchdown came from Martell Williams from four yards out back in the third. Blair out of the shotgun with Offord to his left. The handoff goes to Alford, and he escapes one tackler. That was third, and will be brought down from behind by number 35, Nick Lucas. Boy, Nick Lucas is putting in an Eric Dunton-like performance. He had 10 tackles in the first half. That number could be closer to 20 by the time the game's over. Martell Williams now with 22 carries for 175 yards, averaging eight yards per with two touchdowns. It's first and 10 from the 47. Handoff to Alford. Alford bounces it out left. And great job on the outside, holding contain. That was Jack Givens. Devodney Alford with 18 carries for 80 yards, averaging 4.4 per carry. Of course, it was Braden Smith with the only rushing touchdown for the Wildcats, and that was a nine yard score to the left pylon. For Braden Smith, he's got one rushing attempt on the season and one touchdown. Blair out of the shotgun, second and five from the 48. Smith in motion, as this time the handoff goes to, I think that's number 18, he'll be brought down by Jamal Jackson, but the yak yards of about three for number 18, Tanner Burns. No, that was not Burns. That was Jesse Deglo, number 38. Deglo, 5'10", 200. Got hit by Jackson and picked up about three to four yards after the fact. Hill now moves to the right wing. Hand off to Offord. Nick Lucas there. Offord with a big gainer of about eight yards. Ryan Johnson also in on the tackle. Bishop Darcy Stadium. It's fourth. It's the fourth quarter. Wesleyan down by seven, 307 and counting, second and three from the 35. Evan Elston, the tight end, now to the left. Alford hit in the backfield by Ethan Thur. That's gonna be, looks like no gain on the play. 
brought down by Ethan Thur. Ethan Thur having one heck of a game here, the redshirt freshman from Portland, Indiana. He and Kibion have been going the whole way due to all the injuries on the defensive line. Third and three from the 35. Blair looks to the sideline. They're going to readjust as Alford's offset right and behind Blair. Handoff goes to Alford. Flushed out to the left, and he's got a first down. Knocked out of bounds by Ryan Johnson. Still a big gain of about eight to nine yards. First and 10 from the 27. Smith once again in motion. He's going to go back to the left side. This time the handoff and going nowhere is Jesse Deglow. It's like Jamal Jackson and Miles McClendon in on the tackle. They'll bring up second 10 from the 27. Deglo, two guys in motion there. Smith's going to make it out to the left side. Under center is Blair. Now it's Elson in motion. Fake on the handoff. Blair looking downfield. Nowhere to pass it. Johnson's got the coverage on Smith and knocks it away. There's a flag on the play. Ryan Johnson, you can call him the glove because he's been all over Braden Smith in this game. What a play by Ryan Johnson. And what the, the defensive backfield for the Cougars has been fantastic in this game. Coming into the, today, Zach Blair, one of the top quarterbacks in the country, averaging so, uh, an eligible man downfield. It's the offensive lineman, number 75. But Blair, one of the top passers in the country, averaging 220.6 yards per game. He ranks number 20 in NAIA with that figure. Blair right now with only 144 yards passing in this game. It's third and 10 from the 27, 58 seconds remaining. Offered in motion. Blair looking downfield for Smith, has offered, and what a catch over the shoulder, pushed out at the six yard line. Knocked out by Schumacher and Ryan Johnson. What a catch there by Defodney Alford. Alford, that's his seventh catch of the game. Now with, I think, close to 90 receiving yards to go with his 111 rushing yards. So, University of St. Francis Cougar is going to take a timeout. We'll take one with them. You're watching Cougar football here from Bishop Darcy Stadium. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. And we are back live here from Bishop Darcy Stadium with just 51 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter. And it's first and goal for the Wildcats down by seven at the six yard line. 
What a fast game we have here as it's only 2.35. Normally the games finish up, oh, just a little bit after three. Cougar fans, get on your feet here for the defense. That's Hill in motion. Blair out of the shotgun, hands off to Alford. Alford cuts back, he'll be brought down by Andrew McCormick, a gain of two yards. And now it's gonna be Indiana Wesleyan taking the timeout. So currently St. Francis with one timeout remaining and Wesleyan with two. Harvey Sports Medicine, especially since I've been a pro, has been a place where my game has really been able to develop in multiple facets. Injury prevention, maintenance, physical therapy, weightlifting, agility work, you know, all the things that I need to do in order to have an NBA body. This is the place for me to go when I come back home and I need to get a workout in. Always welcome me back with open arms. Parkview Sports Medicine, game on. Wesleyan with 165 yards passing, St. Francis with 210. Indiana Wesleyan, Devodney Alford, 24 carries for 112 yards. Alford with seven catches for 81 yards. Even though he hasn't scored a touchdown, Devodney Alford so far is your player of the game. Even though Braden Smith has two touchdowns, one rushing and one receiving, but it's been Alford really fueling the Wildcats. And remember, he came into this game with limited touches. Chris Colley with the defense, but that's gonna be a touchdown on second and five from the five. Blair to number two, Braden Smith. Wesleyan gonna keep their offense on the field looking for the win here with 39 seconds remaining. I don't know, I might have to change that decision here with Braden Smith scoring his third touchdown of the game. And boy, you can tell that the combo of Blair to Smith Boy, they've done that a few times. Wesleyan gonna take the timeout here. They'll have one timeout remaining. Just 39 seconds remains here. And Wesleyan's gonna go for the two point conversion unless Coach, Coach Jordan Langs, who's in his third season, really his second season, because they didn't compete two years ago. Jordan Lang is gonna have to make probably the hardest decision of his coaching career right here as it pertains to in-game decisions. Do you go for one and tie it up, or do you go for the W? And if you are Westland, they've had a lot of success finding Alford in the flats, Alford running the ball, but do you go back to your bread and butter, which is quarterback Zach Blair to wide receiver Braden Smith. The Cougar fans in the stands on their feet. Two point attempt, ball at the three. That's Blair under center. They got a heavy package in the backfield and it's gonna be the running back pass and it's broken up! Chris Colley with the pass breakup as that pass was intended for Hill. The throw by number 38, Jesse Deglow. So Chris Colley, who was guarding the wide receiver, Braden Smith, on the touchdown, breaks that one up. And the Cougars hold the 31 to 30 lead. But now the onside kick is coming up. Woo, you gotta love football games at Bishop Darcy Stadium. They are fantastic. Fantastic. Each team with one time out here. Woo. 
Zach Blair now with 170 passing yards and three touchdowns. 16 of 30 passing. Braden Smith, seven catches for 78 yards, averaging 11.1 per with two touchdowns, and Charlie Hill has the other touchdown on two receptions. Wesleyan, only three receivers have caught the ball in this game. Onside attempt here by Ben Von Gunn. The pride of Leo High School, just on the outskirts of Fort Wayne. Big hop, and that's going to go out of bounds. So Von Gunn was that number 42. So the Cougars now with 38 seconds remaining, up 31 to 30. All they got to do is kneel on it now. So St. Francis will move its record to five and one on the season. Two and one in the MSFA. Wesleyan will fall to four and two on the season, two and one the MSFA. Simmons takes the knee. But what a game we had. The first ever meeting between St. Francis and Indiana Wesleyan, and it was fantastic with the Cougars winning it 31 to 30. Hats off to the Wildcats and all their faithful that made the trip 50 miles away from Marion, Indiana. They played one heck of a game. We're gonna go through the scoring real quick. It was But once again, it was Smith with the nine yard touchdown run. Braden Smith to open up the scoring. Followed that by a 20 yard touchdown reception. And Indiana Wesleyan was up 14 nothing. Then a 31 yard touchdown by Dan Ripsey. And the Cougars got on the board with 46 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And then PJ Dean with a four yard touchdown run with 3.56 remaining in the second. Tied it up at 14. Charlie Hill, an eight yard pass from Zach Blair made the score 21 to 14. And then the second half, it was Martell Williams with the 66 yard touchdown run. Then the four yard touchdown run gave St. Francis the 28-21 lead. A Gavin Gardner field goal. And then Wesleyan was able to tie it up there at, not tie it up, but get a touchdown from Smith to make the score 31 to 30. Wesleyan went for the two point conversion, but it did not hold true and that'll do it. So folks, thanks so much for joining us here from Bishop Darcy Stadium. My name is Jeff Mahoney. We had Thomas Nolan on camera, Morgan Carroll and Mariah Nicholson. And our director today is Daniel Beals. So thanks again and have a wonderful rest of your Saturday.